Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just sound like welcome. No, I, I don't know. But, uh, hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be watching uh, three uh, Omegle uh, horror stories. I don't know, it seemed interesting, so there's that. So I'm just going to get into the video. Yesterday, I went to the police station. The cops called me to inquire about a recent horrifying incident. Accidentally, I got involved in this without causing any harm to anyone. It all started last week. I met a guy named Patrick on Omegle. After a couple of interactions, we became quite comfortable. Patrick sent me a friend request on Facebook. I accepted immediately. After talking online for a week, we finally decided to go on a date. He shared with me the address of a local pub. We had a nice time together. I got a bit drunk. Wait, did they talk only through Omegle or did they only, or did they just meet through Omegle? Cause I mean, if they're talking just through Omegle, like, how, how does that even happen? Like, I don't know. I guess this is why they tell you not to have gum. Well, wow. Okay, I don't. So as I was saying, um, I don't know. Oh, wow. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, so because I mean, like, well, I really wasn't paying attention, right? So I, I don't even know if she said, like, like, um, that they met through Amigo or they just, or they just kept talking through Amigo. I don't know. Came quite comfortable. Patrick sent me a friend on Omegle. It all started last week. I met a guy named Patrick on Omegle. After a couple of interactions, we became quite comfortable. Patrick. Okay, so I'm guessing that they just saw each other on Omegle a few times. Like, <laughs> hey, it's, 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 it's uh, you again, um, Patrick. It's Patrick. Yeah, yeah Patrick. Yeah. You forgot my name again, didn't you? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. We had a nice time together. I got a bit drunk, but Patrick safely dropped me home. Patrick was an average height guy. He was caring. Within a few days, he started to give me signals that he likes me more than a friend. But as I just met him and also wasn't looking for a relationship then, I decided to confront him before things got out of hand. Bro, is that an android? Looks like an Android to me, Android user. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm watching this on a MacBook. <laughs> Man. One evening, I was sitting in my bedroom and video calling Patrick. After sharing a laugh or two, I told Patrick that he's a really good friend and I would like to keep things slow between us. So far, I never saw Patrick become angry. I mean, he's that kind of guy who is used to smiling all the time. But as I told him this, I saw his expression change. He suddenly became very upset and disconnected the call without saying a My single fault. word. There we go. Three days went by, but Patrick didn't call or text him. I called him many times, but he never picked up. It was a Thursday evening. I was coming home from the gym. I was walking down the sidewalk. Oh, the streets really? were empty and dark. Suddenly, my eyes went to the left side of the road. There was a street lamp on the left. I saw a man standing behind the street lamp. At first, I got a bit spooked, but as the man came to me, I heaved a sigh of relief. It was none other than Patrick. Patrick came and stood in front of me. His face seemed very different this time. There were dark circles around his eyes. He looked sick to me. I said in a surprising <laughs> voice, Patrick, what happened to you? Are you all right? Patrick smiled in a fake way and said, uh, I am sorry I couldn't get back to you. I was uh, down with a fever. I said in a hesitant voice, Why didn't you call me then? I would have come to see you. Patrick smiled again and said, Can I walk you home? I nodded my head and we started walking together. Mm. For the first few seconds, none of us talked. Grilled Suddenly, mac and cheese said, sandwich. Huh. Why don't you like me, Jenny? I have always good. been nice to you. I said in a calm voice. Whoa, bro. That sounds a little, like, uh, ha, ha, little controlling there, buddy. Bro, I mean, you should, you should calm down there, all right? Right, like, like that's not exactly the kind of tone you're supposed to bring on to a person you just met. Right, I mean, yeah, two weeks, but still, just met. Right, talk to the. <laughs> I don't know why I was about to say talk to the hand. 
<laughs> oh wow. <laughs> this is this is a lot more sad than than whatever that is going on through the show. I, I'm going to like every like sandwich place, and none of them. Wait, wait, wait. What about this one? No, no, no. I'm checking the searching thing there. Um. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Mm, good enough. All right. Uh, what's this place number? Okay. Okay. What's the number? Okay. But where is the? Where is the? No, bro. No, I want the number eighteen. I saw numbers and I want the number eight, bro. Number eighteen. All right. At the Schmaltz. Pretty far, but okay. I was about to say none of these places have egg salad sandwiches. I really thought Panera would have something. I really did. Ooh, a country for. Oh, no, what am I doing? This is a breakfast place. Why would I think that it would have. Uh, okay, now. Schmaltz. That sounds like a weird place. They have weird egg salad, I'm guessing, because it looked like they put mayonnaise in there. When, I mean, yeah, you're supposed to put mayonnaise in there, but I don't know. I, I prefer Miracle Whip and egg salad. I don't know why I'm talking about egg salad sandwiches so much. I do like you, Patrick. It's just. I'm not looking for a relationship right now. Please try to understand. I think we will be better off friends. Patrick again became quiet. I had no intention to be rude to him, but the way he was behaving, I had to be straightforward. We were almost near my house. Rude to bro, you weren't rude to him. You were just telling him, hey, look, look, look at here, all right? Not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> That's it. That you know, you didn't like. I don't know. You didn't like smack him in the face. And go, like, how dare you even come up with with that? How could you even think that? <laughs> how could you? Even... I mean, no, seriously. All right. All you did was tell him. Maybe not now. All right. That's, that that doesn't exact. That's not rude. That's just rejecting him at the moment. All right. All this time, I didn't care much, but suddenly, a question came to mind. I never shared my gym address or schedule with Patrick. I stopped and asked him, how did you know where to find me? Patrick smiled and said, remember the cafe where we met last time? I said, yeah. Patrick replied, when you went to the washroom, I casually checked your phone. Casually? Bro, how'd you, bro, do you not even have a password? I casually? Oh, yeah. I, um... I went to casually grab your phone and search through everything. I uh, I found some interesting photos. I uh, saved them to my phone. <laughs> Sometimes I look at them as I sleep. <laughs> what, like what? That, that's just that's just that's just creepy. All right. Uh, casually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I I just um, yeah. I looked at your phone casually. At least he's being honest about it, but still. Like. There I saw your weekly calendars and found out about this gym thing. I was stunned to see his audacity. Not only did he say all these creepy things in a calm voice, but also took pride in it. Finally. But in that. Nah, he's like. Yeah, I mean. I don't want to brag or anything, but. Uh, I checked your phone. I checked. I don't know. It's, that's just funny to me. All right, he's proud of it. I lost my mind. I said in a loud voice, "I never thought you were a creep, Patrick. You better stay the hell away from me." I walked away. I didn't bother to look back at Patrick. That night, I received many calls and texts from him, but chose to ignore him completely. A few more days went by. One morning, I was sitting on the house porch and drinking coffee when a delivery guy came. He handed me a big package and left. As I opened the package, my stomach dropped. My skin started to crawl. There was a jar filled with a thick reddish liquid. As I opened the lid of the jar... Bro, they accept that in the mail? Who accepts, like, like, uh, fruit punch with molasses in it? Jar, a salty, reeking smell filled my nose. I was... That's why you don't put molasses in fruit punch. Doesn't work. Feeling like throwing up at that moment. Suddenly... My phone rang, and it was Patrick. 
I picked up the phone with furious anger. What the hell is wrong with you? I screamed. <laughs> Patrick laughed as if nothing happened, then said, Don't worry, Jeannie. It's just pig's blood, not mine. Bro, what is this, Carrie? Pig's blood? What, 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 what do you need pig's blood for? Hey, here you go. Pig's blood. What would I need pig's blood for? I don't know of pig recipes. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure you gotta use everything but the blood. You could probably make something out of that, like some fruit punch. <laughs> fruit punch. <laughs> yeah. I would be dead if I had to send that amount of blood to you. I was out of my mind. Is he trying to threaten me now? I said, listen, you freak. Don't you dare try to threaten me. Cowards like you can only make fake threats. That's all. I disconnected the phone so. and blocked him from everywhere. That night, around 1 a.m., I received a call from my friend Tina. As I picked up, Tina said in a panicked voice, Jenny, do you know a guy named Patrick? Uh, I never shared about Patrick with any of my close friends. I almost got up in a rush and said, yes, uh, I met him in Omegle. But how do you know? Bro, did you just pronounce it as Omegle? It's Omegle. <laughs> about him. I never told anyone about him. Tina took a small pause and said, there's a video that has gone viral. People are now sharing it. It's a screen recording of a video call from an Omegle chat. I think you should look at it at once. I replied, but why? What happened? Tina cut the call, and within a few seconds, she sent me a video. As I opened the video, I saw it was indeed a screen recording of an Omegle video chat. Patrick was sitting on the other side of the screen. The man or woman who recorded this obviously had no idea what was going to happen next. In the next two to three minutes, Patrick talked normally. I could hear his voice clearly. Then he said suddenly, thank you for recording my message. I hope it reaches Jenny. Don't know what the other person said, but Patrick smiled. He then again said, Jenny, if you find this video, I want to prove to you how much you actually mean to me. This is why I'm going to commit suicide and love Kemba. Oh my God, this guy is crazy. I never expected Patrick would go insane over such a small issue. He took a sharp knife and placed it on his neck. He then looked at the camera for one last time. His eyes were so vivid that it felt like he was looking right into my eyes. He then said in a spine-chilling, calm voice, I love you, and I am no coward, Jenny. In front of a live chat, Patrick sliced his own throat. Blood came out. What is that sound? <laughs> Bro, I don't know. What like what is that sound? That like is he choking on his own blood? Like, like what? Gushin got up his cut throat. He started to choke on his own blood, making horrible. Oh, I, I guess I was right. <laughs> the video went viral like wildfire. The cops had to intervene in this matter and called me to give a statement about this entire situation. They managed to trace our call logs and messages. The text made things very clear that I never gave any wrong signal to Patrick. It is not my fault that the poor guy took his life. My parents came from Florida and now stay with me. But no matter how much they console me saying it wasn't my fault, deep down inside, I still feel calling him cowardly that day triggered the suicidal tendencies in him. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I'm so scared to meet people. What do you think? Am I really the reason for Patrick's death? Patrick's Pat. Pat yeah. okay, P man. I, I for so, Pat Pat Patrick. There we go. I don't know why I couldn't say Patrick there. All right. Um. Yeah. Patrick is just a weird guy. All right. All right. You might have had some cause in his death, but. That's just, it might be a tiny bit, and by ha tiny bit, I mean, like, partial, all right? Maybe, like, uh, 25 out of 75. I mean, yeah, you, you kind of did just call the guy weird. You called the guy cowardly for no reason. And, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I so I I'm pretty sure there was another content in the box. Here, let me just go back. Bye.
box content. Where is it? Somewhere over here. Come on. Oh, oh there. Okay. Um. My skin started to crawl as I opened the package. I really thought there was something else in the box, like a sheep's head or something. I don't know, it was some like white ball or something. All right, but I guess let's get into the next story. Hi, my name is Crispy. I am currently in high school, but recently, I am going to a psychiatrist. Even a week earlier, I was a happy-go-lucky teenager. I had so many friends, but now, I find it- Why do you have, like, a picture in the background? What is that, like? Or not what is that, who is that? I don't know, I can't tell, I'm blind. Alright. But still, why do you got, like, a picture in the background? It's difficult to trust all of them. Something happened two days back that has turned my world upside down. Man, I, I don't want to be rude or anything, but you got a weird nose. I am sure you are all familiar with the online chatting website, Omegle. Meagle. One of my friends introduced me to this website. This website seemed quite easy. And yeah, I know she's all, uh, they said that again, and I didn't say anything about it. But I, I, I don't know. I don't Too busy chewing gum. My ten cents worth of gum. In other chatting platforms, because there's no need for registration in Omega. This huge library of remaining anonyms makes the website an easy way. But well, what kind of MacBook you got? Like the new Pro, or like? No, that's a USB. I don't, uh, do you even have a charger? Well, no, that's a Windows. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> it's it's, it's a Windows. To talk to strangers. Many of my friends told me that people often lie in chats about their age, gender, but that didn't bother me much. One day, coming from school, I was feeling really bored, so I decided to chat on Omega. I opened my laptop and started to chat with random strangers. That night, I talked to three different people, and it was fun. I saw there is an option for video chat as well, but I wanted to know this website better before going for a random video call with a stranger. What started out as a one night Bro, I don't even do it. Whenever I go on Momiko, I don't, I don't even do the texting thing. Because that's boring. I don't want to text random people go, hey. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't like how I look in the camera, but still. Like, I don't want to know what's on the other side of the, of the, of the screen. Or... However the saying goes, I'm pretty sure that's how the saying goes. I could be wrong, though. I want to see a video because I don't want to read no text about something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. My entertainment soon became an addiction. Whenever I got time, I used to chat with people. Last Saturday, I was home alone. My parents went to dinner. I was chatting with a guy. Well, what, what even is this? You're just typing random things? I really thought that would. <laughs> I know my subscription ended. <laughs> I don't know why I still have Disney Plus up there. Because I am our uh, scary tales. You can subscribe to them or something. They have new videos. Nope. Some people I follow, or not follow, it's Instagram, <laughs> subscribe to. Not, it's, not, all right, but uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, uh, there we go. I saw if there is an option for video chat as the well. videos are watching. But I wanted to know this website better before going for a rent. But, uh, yeah, you're just typing random things. Wait, what is it, quiet in there? Like, You're just there. Like, don't you get like a headache that when it's dark, you're staring at a bright screen, and there is nothing to even listen to other than the clicking, the the clicking of your fingers on the keyboard. And 
make without proper contact. I refreshed the page and again requested a new chat. The page showed me you are now connected with Stranger M19. And then the stranger sent me, hey. I also replied, hi, how are you? After exchanging basic courtesies, I asked, so. <laughs> All right. Is that like a topic or something? I'm pretty sure M19 means male, 19 years old. Are you a male or a female? The stranger replied, I am a 40-year-old mother. Hmm. Why they type in M19 then? <laughs> Alright. Um. So is that like a topic you just searched for reasons? Or. Like, did you just type it in just because? Like. You know, I wonder what these people think. <laughs> or are you are you going like, hey. Man, this is. <laughs> I'm going to use this as a dating app or something here. Like, wh why did you even, sir? Wh wh what's your reasoning for that? Like, I kind of want to know. Like, there like, I mean, I I'm just wondering here. Because, I mean, like, it's Omegle. It's like, it, it, you talk to strangers. You don't date strangers. Or it's, if you really wanted to do that, go, like, Tinder, like, Bumblebee or something. I'm pretty sure there's something called, like, Bumblebee or something. I don't, I don't know. Let me let me check. I'm 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 like I'm pretty sure. There's gotta be like some dating app called Bumblebee. I'm, 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 uh huh. I can't even whistle. Wow. Okay. No, it's just called Bumble. I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. All right, all right. It's Bumble. All right. All right. If you, all right. I don't, I don't even. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> that one video. It was the absolutely. I don't. That's the the word I was looking for. I don't even know if that was in the full video. I edited it a bit, so I don't know. I liked her honest reply. I also told her that I'm a girl currently studying in high school. You might be surprised, but the more I talked with this woman, the more mysterious her text started to become. I thought to disconnect the chat once, but the way she talked, I couldn't. She told me I am a pretty girl. I felt happy with her generous behavior. She then asked me if I have a secret that my parents don't know about. The Bro, how would she know that? This is like the, the, the texting ver version. So I felt odd like a stupid moron. I told her that I am dating a much older guy and my parents don't know about it. Okay. So you just searched up the te You both like... Uh, bro, the last thing it just said lesbian. This is the, the same thing, though. Like, like why, why would... Okay, if you're not that, then why do you even search it? Like, do you just want to wonder... Do you wonder, just thinking... What do these people talk about? <laughs> what do these people talk about? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. She supported me saying, love can happen anytime and at any moment. Getting such What is that smile? Oh. That's just a weird smile. A mental assurance from an adult kind of melted me. I failed to realize how she was luring me into her trap with her sweet words. She suddenly asked me, how well do I connect with my mom? Which felt really weird, but I answered. Like every other teenager, she then said she had to go and put her baby to sleep, but told me to be on the chat. I stupidly waited because, at that point, I had no idea what was going to happen next. I waited for five to seven minutes. Just when I thought she isn't coming back anymore, I started to receive a video chat request from her. So far, I never accepted the video chat of any stranger. But this time, don't know why I did. As we got connected, I saw a woman in her late 40s sitting in front of the camera. She waved at me and said, Hi, Christy. Nice to meet you. Wow. I smiled, too. Imagine saying you're 40 years old and then someone else called you uh, 40, uh, late 40s. <laughs> like, wow, that, that's harsh. <laughs> Either she is in her late 40s or she's just harsh. 
Apparently. <laughs> we started to talk. She was sitting in our living room because I could see the kitchen area right behind her. There was no striking feature on her face except her nose was sharp and pointy. There I also noticed that. I also know that she has like really weird nostrils. <laughs> there were dark circles under her eyes too. I asked her, so how many people are in your family? She smiled and replied, Oh, it's just me and my husband. Oh. What what is that chin? Like I, I don't I don't know. It just seems this one just seems weird. I said in a hesitant voice. And your baby? She I laughed that. awkwardly and said. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know. I just tried to see what uh, that's just, um I wonder what's so funny. <laughs> yes, my baby too. Our son matters so little that we often forget to count him. And kept laughing. <laughs> Honestly, the joke wasn't funny at all. I it was hilarious. I asked her how old is her son. She replied, eight months. I said, oh, that's so cute. I looked at my phone and saw it was 9 p.m. already. I looked at her and said, Samantha, I have to go now. It was nice talking to you. She suddenly stopped smiling and kept staring at my face. Her eyes turned big and she wasn't moving an inch. At first, I thought the screen got stuck. I said, Samantha, are you there? She suddenly oh, wow. really big and said, Ah, oh, nah. <gasps> You already know it's over when the animator <laughs> uh, gets detail on the teeth. Yes? What were you saying? I felt really weird this time. I said, um, I have to go now, so I was... Samantha interrupted me, saying, I feel so horrible. I miss my son. And started to cry, <laughs> hiding her face in her palm. I wasn't able to understand what she was saying. What was that one show? I swear, I watched this one show, or maybe it was a movie, where this uh, woman pushed her, like, husband to, like, lay on the child and suffocate her or something. I can't remember which, like, thing or what it was. I don't, I don't know. But, yeah. Hey, I replied, what? What are you saying, Samantha? She looked at me with tearful eyes and said, My my baby, he died two years back. Trust me, I wasn't at all ready for this shocking news. I said, Oh my God, what happened? She stopped crying and again kept staring at me with an expressionless face. There was something really horrible in her lifeless stare. I was feeling freaked out at this point. She then got really close to the camera and said, I can show you what happened to him. I said in a shake. Show you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you saying? How can you show me that? But before I could ask her more details, she... Ah, oh, nah. She cooked the baby. Nah, man. That thing be... Uh, what is it? Wine? Oh, yeah. You know, it always tastes better after two years. Mm-mm-mm. Tastes just like fried chicken. <laughs> Get up and walk to the kitchen. As soon as she reached near the oven, she looked at me once and said, Close your eyes. I have a surprise for you. She then made a very creepy laugh. She kneeled in front of the oven and okay. opened. I saw clouds of black smoke in the them. oven. I got so scared thinking, is she going to burn down the house or what? Well, I, did, did she didn't tell you, did, gloves, didn't she? took out a tray from the oven. Something was lying on the tray, and I could see it was burnt. She then started to walk close to the camera while the tray in her hand. As soon as she reached near me, my heart dropped into my stomach. I'm guessing I can open my the eyes now. The back of my neck stood up. I saw mm. Okay, so um, you disobeyed this, uh, you, you disobeyed the woman. She told you to close your eyes, and you didn't, you left them open. Like, I listened. I, I, I closed my eyes. I mean, I didn't hear a open your eyes, but still, I opened them. Um, yeah, I regret open them. Because that does not look like a child. That looks like a pancake. Baby lying on the tray with a melted face and burnt clothes. I screamed. 
Oh my God, what did you do to your baby? Samantha <laughs> laughed and said, no, you don't need to worry. This is not my baby. This is just a small doll, Crystal. She then started to laugh. I was speechless. I had no idea what the hell was going on. She was laughing hysterically. That's a small doll, then why is it like, why is it like not dripping? I screamed saying, you are one sick woman. Why did you put the doll in the microwave? She said. Bro, in the microwave? <laughs> <laughs> the microwave. I thought you said the oven in <laughs> the microwave. Oh my dear innocent Christy. I just recreated my son's murder for you. It was a lot more fun when I microwaved Matt. He made me paranoid by crying 24-7. I had no other way but to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. I couldn't take it anymore. I immediately disconnected the chat and ended up sobbing on the floor. After my parents came home, they found me unconscious, lying on the floor. I told everything to my father. He went to the cops yesterday. The cops are now looking for a woman who has murdered her own son. I can't talk to strangers or chat with anyone anymore. This one incident has traumatized me for life now. I saw a baby lying on the tray with a melted face and burnt clothes. I hope the cops follow up on this matter and help me by finding closure soon. I will not be able to sleep until I get to the bottom of this incident. I used to chat with strangers on Omega a lot. Blame it on my failed relationships or the feeling of being lonely in the crowd. Chatting on Omega was my way out. But they say too much of something is not good. One evening. I was sitting in my room. Heavy I think that's the guy from FNAF. <laughs> like, no, I mean it's just like it's blue and purple. I don't know. He looks like the night, like a night guard or something. I don't know. Heavy rain and a thunderstorm were going on outside. I was waiting for Omegle to connect me with a stranger. It was taking more time than usual. I went to get myself a glass of water in the kitchen. When I came back to my room, I noticed I had been connected to a stranger, and that person sent me. Hey there, I replied. Hi, how are you? But without replying directly, the person started to request a video call. I have talked to strangers on video call many times, so it didn't bother me much. I immediately accepted the video call. As the screen lit up, I saw a young, beautiful girl sitting in front of me. I was shocked to see her because... I didn't expect her to call me without leading the conversation ahead for a while. Anyways, I sat down and said, Hi, I'm David, and you are? I lied about my name because I wanted to keep my real name hidden. She smiled mysteriously and said, I am Trinka. Tell me, David, how old are you? I replied, I am 28. What kind of name is Trinka? <laughs> they just see a trinket like one day and I'm thinking... No, this would be good. This would be an amazing name for for our child. Yeah, huh? Mm, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. And then the the day of birth. All right. Trinka. That's it. That they decided Trinka. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. D definitely. She said in a low voice. I heard it. I don't know why she said it, but I didn't react either. <laughs> Being honest. I was kind of blown away by her beauty, and at the time, I was single, too. We started to talk about regular stuff, like what she does, and she asked me what Whoa, I did. Oh, he says at the time, man. But as I said before, it's a, it's, it's, you're supposed to use this to talk to people, not date people. Or right? If you really wanted to, I just suggested Bumble and Tinder and FarmersOnly.com just right now. Did for a living. While I talked to her, I noticed her room. Her room looked very different. Wind chimes were hanging from the ceiling, and the wall was decorated with gothic paintings and dark art. I realized she had a passion for all of this. I asked her, do you like this gothic stuff? She replied, do you believe in life after death? Uh I wasn't excited.
Why does his mouth look like a mustache? Expecting the conversation to take such a turn. As she asked me this question, I saw her eyes sparkling mysteriously. I replied, when you die, you die. That's all, Trinka. Trinka smirked at me and said, where do you stay? I told her the street name, but not the full address. She started Bro, to... wait, wait, why would you tell her the street name? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> oh, so you live near the White House. Who said that? You said you live in Pennsylvania Avenue? Yeah, the one in Pennsylvania. <laughs> the one in Pennsylvania. <laughs> nah. Laughed like a child. I said with surprised eyes, What happened? What's, what's so funny about my address? She said, It will take 10 minutes to meet me, David. I am in that street area now. I got shocked and said, Really? Trinka nodded her head and then said, That's not nodding. That's just like bringing her head down. What was that? That was not nodding. You know there's going to be a late night party at my house tonight. I think you should come. It will be fun. I checked the time on my phone. It was 11 p.m. already. Trinka said, The storm has stopped too. This is my house address. See you at 12 a.m. Subscribe street. I am our lane. House no... 2021. Sharp. I heard the sound of her doorbell and she disconnected the video call abruptly. All right. For a minute, I couldn't believe what just happened. Did I really get an invitation to a party from a beautiful girl whom I just met online? It got me anxious thinking should I go or not, but in the end, my rational senses gave up. After all, it was a party and I was looking to socialize. So I got up and went to the washroom. I was keeping my expectations low, hence. Um, nah, man, he's pulling up with the Superman shirt. All right, he's gonna walk in there, and every everybody's gonna they're gonna go up to him. Like everybody, the whole party's gonna stop, and it's gonna re restart. All right, like because of this guy right here, because he's pulling up with the Superman shirt. All right, you you, <laughs> you, you already know everybody is just gonna. <laughs> Everyone's gonna want to be around this guy, right? I wore a simple t-shirt and a pair of jeans. I copied the address on my phone. It was Subscribe Street, IMR Lane, house number 2021. Trinka was right. It took wow. 12 minutes to reach there by car. The house was in complete darkness. At first, it felt like... You no, know, I wonder if that's an actual, like, like place... <laughs> I'm gonna let this go on. I'm gonna find out. No one lived there. I walked to the main door and rang the doorbell. It made the exact same sound I heard during the video call. I was feeling really stupid at that time. Suddenly, the door opened and I saw Trinka. She smiled at me and said, Hi, David. Welcome to my den. I entered the house. The living room was filled with candles. The entire decor of the house was almost like Halloween. I already saw Trinka being interested in gothic styles and decor. Trinka was wearing a black cloak. There were five to seven people inside the house. They were uh, sitting in a circle. A girl came to so me and handed a place me called a subscribe I asked Trinka, what kind of party is this? She replied, we are going to call him. I said in a low voice, who? Trinka replied, you asked so many questions. Keep quiet and join us. I sat down inside the circle. Oh no, he joined the cult. I counted and realized after including me and Trinka, it was a circle of nine people. Suddenly, a guy lifted his arm. He was holding a sharp pointing knife in his hand. Trinka got up and left. Bro, is this gonna be like that movie? On Netflix? You know, like like that one movie from Netflix? Like it, like it was an original movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the babysitter on, from Netflix. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the hell is going on here when I heard a weird sound. A childlike baby was crying in the house. Trinka came out. Yep, exactly. Holding a newborn baby in her hand. The entire group got up and raised their arms into the air. I don't, I don't know what they're actually going to say. I don't know. I just imagine them saying, I don't know, this random gibberish. 
They all started to chant something in a whispering manner. It took me time to realize they were doing a cult ritual. Trinka placed the you think? baby at the center of the circle. The guy then got up and went on to stab the baby. I screamed, saying, What are you doing? Are you all out of your mind? <laughs> they all started to laugh like maniacs. I knew I had stepped into trouble right at that moment. I was thinking to snatch the baby and run away, but they were surrounded with like hellhound. Bro, they already stabbed it. There's no way it survived. Look how much blood's on that knife. They all stopped laughing, and Trika came right in front of me. She said in a scary voice, Do you want power, David? Aman is going to show us life after death. You completed our circle, David. Now, all you have to do is sacrifice this baby to make our final offering to Aman. Come, praise him with us. I took a few steps back and said, Amma. Come, praise him. Yeah, Amma. Who is Amman? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Amman the man. <laughs> him with us. I took a few steps back and said, You all are sick. If I knew this was your intention, I would not have come here, Trinka. But what? I was. But get your eyes cleaned or something. That I thought that was dust. I was thinking at the back of my mind about how to escape this coat group when I heard a cop siren outside. I realized the cops might have figured out the location of this missing baby and have come to catch these culprits. Without thinking much, I ran to the back door, and as soon as I came out, I locked the door from the outside. I saw a big shovel lying at the back door. I used it to block. Oh yeah, that looks like a shovel. The door from the outside, so none of. Definitely not a pitchfork. I didn't. Why do you? Why do you have a pitchfork? No, never mind. None of them can come out. I want. I don't even think that's a pitchfork. That I'm pretty sure that's more of a rake than a pitchfork. But you know, never mind. I wanted to take the baby with me, but I didn't have ah. time for this. The cops broke the main door and busted in. I ran away and hid behind a bush at some distance from the house. The cops caught the entire gang. I saw Trinkus take the robe off, screaming at them. We had another member. He ran away. Go catch him. His name was David. But the cops didn't listen to her. I came home like a criminal. I didn't go out for a month. I saw their group on the news. They stole the baby from a local hospital. They have been sentenced to prison. And I am still scared thinking about what would have happened if I didn't run away that day. I'm just glad the newborn has been returned to its family. It scares me how Trinka tried to frame me that day. I am glad I didn't use my real name while chatting in Omegle. Well, it's a good thing you didn't. Because then we w I wouldn't have something to watch. I'm I'm gonna watch one more. All right, that that seems like something. Parallels Desktop is trusted by more than seven million users mm. worldwide to run well, Windows mm -hmm. on Mac. Whether yeah, you need to mm -hmm. run a Windows program, develop, or test. This is an utterly disturbing story. My husband and I are both doctors. We both have pretty hectic work schedules. <laughs> we have a son who's only four years old. It was difficult to raise him and manage the work at the same time. Hence, we had to rely on babysitters to keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm. He's always been a pretty active child. The area we live in can definitely be considered safe until this incident shook all of us. It happened last week, and I'm still trying to get over the trauma. My husband and I work in the same hospital. I am both surgeons. <laughs> After the pandemic and lockdown period, our work stress increased rapidly while Monty stayed home alone. So, my Monty? What kind of name is Monty? Husband and I often kept a babysitter to watch over him. I posted an ad on a very famous social media platform. Three days. Oh, yeah, Facebook. Very famous. Three <laughs> days after posting the ad, I received a call from a girl named Diana. Diana was a student, and she seemed very interested in the job over the phone. Bro, who who under the age of 40 uses fa Facebook? Because, I mean, I, I generally want to know. 
Like, who uses Facebook? <laughs> Alright, it's the new MySpace. <laughs> no one even uses MySpace anymore. I mean, there's gotta be someone, but still. No one really uses it. Without thinking. Now I think about it, there's probably a lot of people that use Facebook. I'm probably just not one of those people. I don't know. I prefer Twitter over, like, Facebook. I just, I don't know. I, I no, <laughs> I think, of, you know, I, I could be wrong. You know, there might be a lot of people that use Facebook. Who knows? Much. I told her to come by and babysit on Thursday evening. The day arrived. And if I'm being honest, Diana and Monty got along really well. They started to play puzzles. And I got relieved that Monty would be in good hands. My husband and I left for the hospital. I told Diana that we would be home by 10. I also told her that we made a pasta for them, and it was in the fridge but needed to be microwaved. And that Monty's... Well, why was it so dramatic when they got to the pasta? <laughs> I also told her that we made a pasta for them, and it was in the fridge. <laughs> You're right there. I also told them we made a pasta. <laughs> what was that? But needed to be microwaved, and that Monty's bedtime was at 8 p.m. Diana smiled at me and said, Sure, Mrs. Mendez. As I got in the car, I saw Monty and Diana standing at our house porch and waving me goodbye. After that day, Diana became a regular choice whenever we needed a babysitter. She became good friends with Monty, and surprisingly, Monty listened to her with full attention. I was happy to see this sudden change in Monty at first. One day, my husband was out of the station at a medical conference. I took the day off so that I could spend time with Monty. I decided to draw him a bath and then watch a cartoon movie with him. I placed him inside the bathtub, and when I went to scrub his back, I got shocked. There was a weird Oh symptom. no, it's the compass rose. It's not the compass rose. Symbol drawn onto his shoulders with a black marker pen. I didn't understand what the symbol meant. I asked Monty what the sign was, and he just replied saying it was nothing. That was the first time I felt like my son was hiding something from me. I asked him again who did this to him, and he replied, saying, Diana and I were playing. She has a tattoo like this. I wanted one too, and that's when she drew it on me. I know I should have dealt with this matter with more priority, but at that moment, it appeared like a silly childish wish, and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Was that a dinosaur? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems weird. Fast forward a week later. Oh, guys, guys... You gotta know, Splitgate, Beta Season 1, new season, new ma modes, new map, right? And best of all, pay, play for play for free. Amazing. <laughs> and I was doing regular house chores. I was cleaning the window of Monty's room. I opened it to wipe the outside surface of the glass. That's when I found a cross-like figure. As I looked more closely, I noticed strands of hairs tied to it, too. I didn't know where it came from. I thought maybe the window brought it here. I dumped it in the dustbin and didn't say anything to my husband. I overlooked the alarming situation that day. More time passed, and I realized all that was happening wasn't just some weird coincidence. My husband and I were sitting in the living room watching a movie, and suddenly he said, Amy, I was thinking of asking you something. I replied asking what it was, and he said, Did you notice anything strange in Monty's behavior? Until now, I was keeping that feeling to myself. But as Simon mentioned it, I immediately looked at him with worried eyes. Simon went on to say, Last night, when I went to the kitchen to get water, I heard whispering sounds coming from Monty's room. At first, I thought maybe I imagined it, so I tiptoed to his room and peeked inside. You won't believe what I saw. I immediately... It's the baby fitter. We asked him what. I saw our son was sitting on the bed and praying. Oh, never mind. I, I really thought it was the babysitter. I mean, I have no issues with this sudden change, but, you know, we've never been a very religious family. I wonder how we learned all that. Simon's voice sounded confused. We were both a bit worried, but you can't just scold a child for praying, right? So we didn't confront him at that point. One night, Diana came to babysit again. I instantly asked her, uh, Diana, if you don't mind, can I ask you something? Diana replied with the same smiling face. 
Sure, Mrs. Mendez. What is it? I said in a hesitant voice. Did you teach Monty to pray before bed? She didn't get startled by my question. With the same calm expression on her face, she said, What's wrong in praying, Mrs. Mendez? Honestly, I had no logical answer to her question, so I just dropped the topic. I mean, seriously, no harm ever came from a four-year-old kid praying before sleep, right? And days passed, and my son started to change into a completely different person. Monty stopped running around the house, or doing all those things to annoy me. Suddenly, he turned into an extremely quiet and introverted kid. At some point, his behaviors freaked me out. I know, right? He's four. I'm sorry I'm talking like this. And forget. There we go. Sorry, uh, gum. For example, one afternoon, I was working in the backyard. Monty was sitting on a swing and watching the birds fly in the sky. I said in a joyful voice what a lovely day it was, and asked Monty if he thought the same. He didn't reply like he used to. I was thinking to go and play with him, and suddenly a small bird fell on the ground. Bro, he's gonna do that thing from that one movie with the thing. <laughs> I swear it was, it was uh, uh, the, the, uh, what, what, the orphan, that's what I was thinking of, where she kills the bird. I rushed towards it and picked it up. Are you hurt, the little guy? And that was when Monty said something that made the hair on the back of my neck stick. Put it out if it's suffering, mama. <laughs> Stand up. Monty walked close to me and looked at the bird and then said, Bro, was he gonna chew it or something? <laughs> and it's pain, mom. It should die. That's what I just said. Yeah, alright. Alright, um. Alright. It's a good thing that guy called me. Now I realize that my phone is at 97%. Alright. Anymore. And it probably would have gone to 100. And, be able, and my phone would be overcharged. And you know the battery would, would get worse. You know. Over time. Eventually. I'm, I'm going to end the video after this story. I, I was shocked hearing these cruel words from a 4 year old. I said... Monty, why would you say something like that? Because, mother, look at it. It doesn't want to be on this planet anymore. It suffered so much. Please, just let it be. Who told you all these things? Suddenly, he looked at me, and I felt this was not the Monty I used to know. There was something in his eyes that spooked me that day. He smiled in a very evil way. And then went inside. I told my husband this instant, and we both came to the conclusion that Diana is leaving a bad impression on her son. So we decided to opt for. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep playing the video. A new babysitter the next time. We finally did. The new babysitter's name was Corey. She was the daughter of our next door neighbor, so we knew her well. I said to Monty, Monty, Corey will come and watch you tonight. Your father and I will be home as soon as we can. Monty looked at me with angry eyes and said, Genshin Impact is an open-world action RPG game available on cross-platforms. Step into a vast magical world now and start your adventure on the continent of Tayvat. Genshin Impact has now released version 2.2, where the traveler gets new challenges, events, and missions to complete, which also include the newest mysterious island to explore, Inazuma's Surumi Island. This uncharted land is covered in a dense fog full of new monsters and new resources for you to discover. Not to mention, we have some returning banners, where you can pull for Tartaglia, who is a very sexy man that wields a bow, but also conjures water daggers, which can change the course of battle. Oh, and don't forget about the new 5-star bow, Polar Star. Oh yeah, and there's Hu Tao. She is a fire user that wields a pull arm and talks to the dead. And last but not least, get ready for the new four-star character, Toma, the Kamisato clan's housekeeper, protector from afar. Thanks again, Genshin Impact, for sponsoring this video. Use my link in the description below to get Genshin Impact on your devices right now and get your adventure started today. Oh, well. 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 Oh,
Chargers. This is how fast YouTube is with Frank. Where's Diana? I instantly replied. She won't come here anymore. Corey's your Was there an ad or something? I really wasn't. <laughs> I, well. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I don't know if you heard the conversation. I'm going to hope not. I'm going to guess not. I don't know. It's because, well, it's a conversation. You're not really supposed to eavesdrop or anything. And, yeah. I don't know. It was. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to. I'm gonna guess that it wasn't, but I'll check back later in the video. I mean, I could probably edit it out, but still. Oh. Wait, no, I can't. I mean, I can, but then part of the video wouldn't even be in there. I think there was an ad. I don't know. Your new babysitter from now on. Monty started to argue. No, I want Diana. I lost my calm voice and scolded him, saying... I told you, Diana won't come here. Now go to your room. I don't want to hear another word about Diana. Corey came, but Monty didn't come out of his room. I left for work with a disturbed mind. After being at work for a while, I came out of the emergency room. I went to my desk to call home just to check on them. I was going to dial when I received a call from Diana. Out of irritation, I picked it up and said what? Diana replied, Mrs. Mendez... I don't think the new babysitter will be able to take good care of Monty. You should probably think again. I was disgusted to see the girl's audacity. I screamed on the phone, saying Monty was my son, and then I knew what was best for him. I told her if she didn't stay away, I would take serious action. I then disconnected the phone. My husband came and asked me what happened. I told him the entire- Ew, you work at the same job? That's something, though, all right? Now, did you work at the same job beforehand or during? Or uh, after, right? Because after would be fine. But during, I mean, beforehand? No, that that's just, that's just weird. Fire matter. Still angry. I also told him I should have kicked that freak out the day she made a weird tattoo on our son. My husband looked. Then again, who knows? If I could have just met through, like, another system, but. There's like a thing like I don't know, don't date your coworkers or something. I don't know. I can't remember where I remember that from. I can't remember if it's a YouTube video episode at the office. I don't know. To me with confused eyes and said, "What tattoo?" I explained to him it was a star inside a circle. Simon googled something on his phone and then showed it to me, saying, "Is this the symbol you're talking about?" It was indeed the symbol. Simon then said in a panicked voice. We should have taken this matter more seriously. Why? I replied. What does the symbol mean? And he came to know that it was actually a satanic symbol that cult groups worship. All the weird behavior of my son started to make sense to me. The thought of Diana being a cult member came to me. I immediately called the house to warn Corey to not let her in if she comes. I dialed her number, but it just kept ringing. My heartbeat grew rapidly, and Simon and I rushed towards the car. We called 911 on our way home. When we reached the house, we found the house in pitch darkness. Not a single light was on. As I walked close to the main door, I heard a chanting sound coming from Monty's room. I found the door locked from the inside. Simon twisted the key and the door finally opened. The entire house stood like a set from a horror film. There was this burning smell. I noticed someone was lying on the living room couch. Simon slowly walked, and we found Corey on the couch. She was unconscious. There was dried blood on her forehead. It was clear someone hit her with a blunt object and made her unconscious. I ran to Monty's room, and I opened the door. That's when my heart sunk in terror. His room was filled with candles. Monty was lying on Diana's lap. She was chanting some psychotic prayers. There was a circle made around them. And beyond all that, she was holding a knife to my four-year-old son's throat. I screamed at her what she was doing with my son. Pretty sure the air is not the throat. Diana opened her eyes and started to laugh like a maniac. I could see Monty woke from a sense of numbness and started to cry. Diana said in an evil voice, The Dark Lord demands your son's soul. I'm preparing him for the sacrifice. Once I submit his soul, I'll be immortal. He'll give me all the powers he has promised. I mean, bro, I thought this was for, like, the good of humanity, but then you're like, it'll make me immortal. <laughs> like, bro, that's, 
why would you want to be immortal, like, ever? Like, th there's no reason for that. I screamed in response, saying that if she hurt my son, I would kill her. Diana just laughed and rose her knife while chanting her satanic prayers. I screamed at the top of my lungs, saying no. Suddenly, my husband rushed towards her, and before she could slice Monty's throat, Simon hit her with his baseball bat hard. It all happened so quick that Diana couldn't guess it coming. She fell on the floor, and blood started to flow from the back of her. Monty got up and rushed towards me while crying and shaking in fear. We called the cops, and they came shortly after to take her into custody. Corey was admitted to the hospital as well. Diana had been shifted to a mental institution after she recovered from the head injury. When the cops came to know that she had joined a cult group, it still scares me to sleep that if we hadn't reached home in time, she would have actually sacrificed my son for some satanic ritual. Her psychotic chants still haunt me in my sleep. Have you heard this amazing game called Rage Shadow Legends? It's just, it's this um it's this game where you, where I don't know, I've never played the game. I I I don't know anything about the ads. They just show up, all right. But yeah, this is the end for this video. I know it's probably been pretty long. I don't know. It's for me, it's been like thirty minutes. For you, it's probably been an hour, all right. But uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it for now. Bye.